This news update is brought to you by... Rock the remote with hours of free karaoke on video on demand from Flo. So bring it like Bay. There's even wonderful kids sing-alongs too. Available anytime. Simply press the VOD button on your flow remote. This is how we do TV. This is how we flow. This is the Bobby Today Evening Update for Tuesday, February 9th, 2016. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Two brothers will spend the next month behind bars on murder charges. 22-year-old Alon Elroy Atwell and his 19-year-old sibling Antonio Ronaldo Atwell, both of Culvert Terrace, Hainesville, St. James, were today formally charged with the stabbing death of Travis Austin. The body of the 24-year-old of Prior Park St. James was found in a track at Central Close, Hainesville, St. James, last Thursday, around 10 minutes past 11. The Atwell brothers appeared in the Holton Magistrates Court and were remanded to prison until March 8, 2016. Also appearing in court today and remanded to prison until March 8th is 26-year-old Ricardo German Novel of School Lane, Halls Road, St. Michael. Novel is charged with the unlawful possession of a firearm and illegal possession of ammunition. He was arrested following a street search by the Tactical Response Unit at Cavens Lane, St. Michael on Sunday afternoon. He was found in possession of a firearm containing six rounds of ammunition. In other news, $100 million in waste. That's how Environment Minister Dr. Dennis Lowe is describing the construction of the Greenland landfill in St. Andrew by the former Barbados Labour Party government. Leading off debate in Parliament this morning on proposed changes to the Sanitation Services Amendment Bill, the minister also charged that the opposition BLP was in no position to criticize the current administration on the proposed Cahill Waste to Energy project. In fact, he accused the opposition of hypocrisy and of creating a mess of at Greenland while maintaining that his government's hands are clean. A hundred million dollars and a proposal to spend another hundred and forty-nine million dollars and the taxpayers have not benefited in any way, shape or form from that expenditure. That's the point, Mr. Speaker, and that is why I did not just simply want to come and redo an amendment and sit down. I, I, I want to take the country, not the opposition, the opposition know the history well, take the country through the process. So I am saying to all Barbadians out there, regardless of your institution of affiliation, who wants to get up and scream and shout about money not spent, I want you to get up and scream and shout about money spent. Is that fair? Money gone. I sent a team to Greenland about three weeks ago to give me a pictorial example of Greenland now. Listen, Mr. Speaker, sir, I am telling you, you would swear that ISIS passed through there. <laughs> However, Shadow Minister for the Environment, Dwight Sutherland, accused the government of poor governance and challenged the law to accept responsibility for the sanitation issues facing the country. Replying to Dr. Lowe's over two-hour presentation, Sutherland denied that millions of dollars were pumped into the Greenland project under the BLP administration, even as he knocked plans for the government's plasma gas project next to what he says is the construction of the SSA building in St. Thomas. When you put a five-story building in the middle of nowhere next to a plasma gasification plant, you have to look at safety issues of flammable gases, the, syn the synthesis gases, the, the carbon monoxide and the hydrogen and stuff, if we have any issues. These are some of the things that we have to look at. The water content. And I know at Light and Power, to, to cool water 10 degrees, you need 50,000 gallons of water per minute. Mr. Speaker, and I'm saying these are some of the, these are some of the issues with this government. Accountability, effectiveness, and fairness. But I must also call on the government because I understand they are forging ahead with this plasma gasification plant. 
I must call on the government to rethink this. You must rethink it. You are not being good stewards of public funds and you are taking decisions not in the best interest of this country. Sutherland also accused the government of having misplaced priorities. It's not just a case of misplaced priorities or a case of poor governance. It is a case also of fiscal recklessness and again bungling, what I call bungling. And it fosters tremendous mistrust between governments and the private sector. This is a case study of how not to do any project. And it is the taxpayers who must pay for this. And you telling me about good governance. It's poor governance. In sports, Elizabeth House are the champions of St. Michael's School Sports. They accumulated 1,007 points to the throne last year's winners, both this year. Both this year were beaten into second position with 821 points when the games were held at the National Stadium. Annie House secured the third spot with 786.5 points and Victoria House came in fourth with 690.5 points. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados. Across these 166 square miles, in every parish, in every community, in every sector, in every home, in every sphere, you can find a gem, a Belgian gem. Celebrate their stories as we celebrate 50 years of independence. To news from the region, we head to Jamaica, where it was a celebratory-like affair as political hopefuls trek to centers across the country to file their nomination papers. In the camp of the ruling People's National Party, scores lined the street as Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller went in and filed her papers and handed over her $3,000 fee at the Greenridge Farm All Age School in her St. Andrew Southwest constituency. She was then handed a copy of the voters' list. The leader of the Jamaica Labour Party, Andrew Holness, also completed the nomination process in his St. Andrew West Central constituency with chairs from a massive crowd at the Waltham Educational Centre. 63 seats are at stake in the February 25th general election. And finally, German Chancellor Angela Merkel today expressed her dismay and sadness over the train crash that claimed the lives of at least 10 people. Scores were injured after two passenger trains collided head-on in the German state of Bavaria. A doctor at one of the four hospitals in the region where the injured were being transported revealed that 40, 54 people were being treated eight of them with serious injuries. Police say the drivers of both trains and two train guards were among those killed and one person is still missing. Bangled wreckage of the commuter trains both completely derailed in the head-on collision. It happened just before 7 a.m. during rush hour. The trains were traveling at a top speed of 120 kilometers an hour. Transport officials say drivers on both trains were unable to see the other as they traveled around a bend on a single track line. It is shocking that the two trains became wedged. One of the trains drilled into the other one, and the cab of the second train was totally torn apart. Police arrived within three minutes of getting the emergency call. 
the wooded mountainous area on the Austrian-German border was difficult to reach. More than a dozen helicopters were needed to airlift survivors out. That report from the CNN brings us to the end of our news and sports updates. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. Also, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 and Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. There you can get all the latest news and sports. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.